so good morning everyone welcome to lecture 18 so it's the first half after your minor examination and just to give a recap of what we have done till now so we have talked about kinematics motion we talked about the formulas for different strains change in length change in angle change in area change in volume and then we also looked at their time derivatives and we saw a very important quantity that is velocity gradient which appears in the time derivative of those quantities okay so this was all kinematics what we have done till now is all kinematics basically if the motion is prescribed through that y hat function so remember this y equal to y hat of x comma t right so this y hat function is the motion or we used to call it configuration also so all the formulas were in terms of this variable y hat isn't it position velocity acceleration then uh, deformation gradient then stretch tensor polar decomposition all of them involve this y hat function or its derivative spatial derivative or time derivative so that is why it is all kinematics we haven't yet related this y hat with the forces that may be acting on the system, right? We haven't yet talked about why this y hat is generating in the body. We just said given y hat, okay, these are the different geometric quantities, but we haven't talked about why this y hat appears in the first place. So we are now going to move in that direction to find an answer to how we can know given the force that is acting on the body what will this y hat be okay so that requires us to you know derive equations if you think of it in terms of mathematics then y is like an unknown so you have this reference configuration any particle is at x <clears throat> and then it goes to deformed configuration which is changing with time so this is an unknown right current configuration or deformed configuration that's an unknown So how can we find this? So mathematically, since it's an unknown, we need some equations, right? So we are going to derive those equations now, okay? So to get to those equations, we will, you know, we'll need to know how to obtain time derivative of different properties of a system and by property i mean for example it can be let's say linear momentum it can be mass it can be angular momentum it can be energy or many other things okay and you will see that when we try, try to find out the rate of change of these quantities they lead us to the equations that we want so you know this body this is as a whole this is a whole body and we say that it occupies the region R, isn't it? And this is R ref. 
and this is r at time t okay and if i you know bring the perspective of particles in the body so you remember the body is just a collection of particles remember in the beginning we used to say that and then we just forgot about particles so i'll just uh, repeat that a body is just the collection of particles and then you had this map um for example x was given by this configuration map j ref and you pass to it the particle p isn't it similarly to get the current position y of a particle you had this j you pass to it the particle p and also the time t if you want to get the current position and the whole body so this is a single particle and the whole body we denoted by this big p that was a whole body and understand that this is just a collection of particle but the body also has its parts right you can think of some subset of the whole particle so you can think of for example a subset d just a subset of the whole body okay so p is denoting the whole body and then d is just the part of the body okay and then the question could be what is the energy associated associated with the part of the body isn't it that could be one question what is the energy associated with the part of the body similarly the question could be what is the linear momentum associated with the part of the body and when you say the part of the body it could also mean the entire body but the entire body is, is like the full part of the body itself okay so what will you do then so for example when you have when you want to find out the energy associated with the part of the body then basically you have to integrate over all the particles in that part of the body isn't it so this part of the body is denoted by d okay and uh, so if you um for example think of what is the region occupied by this part then how will you denote that so the region occupied by the part of the body d so understand that this big p is the full part okay this is a full part whole body okay i have also written it here so i may be using slightly different notation than in the book but we have to understand the logic so what's the region occupied by the part of the body so if you want to know the reference region then you just have to 
use this function chai rep and pass to is pass to it this part of the body d is it it and d has uh, all the particles in that part so this will give you the region occupied by the body in the reference configuration similarly if you want to get the region occupied by the body in the deformed configuration so this is in reference configuration and for deformed configuration you just use this chai of d comma t okay now the question see why i'm doing all this because i want to get the total any of those properties that i mentioned above linear momentum mass angular momentum energy those things of the total part of sorry of the part which has those particles so remember one thing we said that to get this integrate over all the particles now that's uh, a slightly you know uh, i should say abstract thing to say let me say what i mean so d is collection of the particles of the part of the body so what i am saying is you integrate over d and if you have linear momentum then suppose i denote this by um the vector p okay this is for linear momentum let us just suppose that so this p has to be per unit particle and then you have here you know this d p and this is for the particle small p so basically it's like integrating over all the particles so that is you know kind of abstract thing because when we said the particles you know the particles were it's just a collection so how do you integrate over the particles you can sum over the particles because we said it's just a collection no the body is just a collection of particles so you can sum over the particles but you can't integrate but the whole thing about continuum mechanics is that we should be able to integrate we should be able to use calculus and it's calculus that lets you derive equations of motion it's a continuum picture so how can we go from this summation over all the particles so this is i'll just say it is abstract at the best you can say sum over all the particles so how can we go from summing over all the particles to some kind of integration can anyone tell me how to do that if our final goal is to get the total linear momentum and let me denote that by big p okay that is for the total linear momentum of the body and i can also put some d here to say that it is of the part of the body denoted by d so can anyone give me some idea how to go from this abstract summation over all the particles to some kind of integration okay so nikhil says integration over the region occupied by that part so that's a very good suggestion and in fact that is what one does so it's a very good point then that why don't we integrate over the region occupied by that part because the region is like a continuous thing no it's a continuous thing in the space so you can 
do volume integration, for example, over that region. And this region could be either the reference region or the current region. Isn't it? So this could be reference or current region. Just think of, for example, in case of mass. So when you have, want to get total mass M of the part of the body D, then what will you say? This is like summation over all the particles. And then you have mass of each of the particles and P. Right, and then this P is belonging to D. But the same thing we can now think of if those particles are occupying the current region denoted by R of T, isn't it? That's what we use now. Then uh, how to do that? So what should I write here? Can someone tell me? So I want to get total mass and I'm integrating over the current region. Instead of integrating over the particle, we thought, OK, let's integrate over the current region. Then what should I write more here? Mass density. Yes, very good. So we should have mass density and you see we are integrating over the current volume so it is of course a mass density rho and then you have d v right d v y for example so this rho should this be density i mean mass per unit volume then which volume mass per unit current volume or mass per unit reference volume what should this be? But you see, because you are integrating over the current volume, no? so it should be, and uh, as the body deforms, its density changes. So therefore here, this rho has to be mass per unit current volume. And let me write this more nicely. So this, you can write it as triple integration. And this R, I'll just say here R of T like this. So to make it really clear that it's a function of time. The region over which we are integrating is also a function of time. And then this rho is then a function of Y, right? The current position, so that has to be given by Y and at time T. And then you have here dVy, okay? So this is, of course, uh, so what do you think? Is this uh, Lagrangian description, Eulerian description? What is it? This rho, is this Lagrangian or Eulerian? Eulerian, right? Because it's a function of the current position. So it's an Eulerian density. And it's an Eulerian way to get the total mass of this part of the body D. Can you think of uh, Lagrangian description? To obtain the mass of the same part of the body D. Anyone? What should I do? So by the way, this is rho bar, no? This is Eulerian, so I'll just say it is rho bar. So you're saying replace y with x. Okay. So you have some rho hat then as a function of x, comma t, dv, and what should it be? dvy. But you see, this is rho hat. It's a Lagrangian function. So obviously, it depends on. Are we meaning this to be mass per unit current volume or mass per unit reference volume? So a true Lagrangian function should be 
it should be mass per unit reference volume. Okay, so then what do you think what it should be? dv so it will be dvx right then only because it's mass unit reference volume no so that means you should integrate over the reference uh, region and therefore here you have r ref okay so of course, with this uh, uh, notations for density, let's uh, let's just see. Can we say that both are same? The both the integrals will it be same? Should it be same or it should be different? Okay, Mir has a very good point. It should be just rho hat of x. It need not be a function of time. Because it is mass per unit reference volume. So are the two quantities the same? Some two people are saying it's the same. But why do you think it is same? Any physics reason to say it will be the same? Conservation of mass. But can you be more, let's be more clear about this. I mean, give me more particular reason instead of saying conservation of mass. Number of particles are same. It's not just the number of particles, it's actually the same particles. Although the volumes are different, the regions are different. But it's the same particles which is occupying the two regions, right? And the mass of the particle is not changing here. We are not doing any relativistic mechanics that the mass of the particle is changing. Okay, it's a simple continuum mechanics. So because it's the same set of particles, you know, it's it's not just the same number of particles, it's the same set of particles because both correspond to the same D. Right? It's the same part of the body D, MD. So therefore, the two integrals should be same. So that means I would write it as MD is equal to, you can have either integration over the reference region, and then it is rho hat of x dvx, or you write in the Eulerian form, And then you are having this Eulerian density rho bar of y. Okay, so it's y comma d d v y. Okay, excellent. So we are making very good progress. So we identified that they are both the same because it is the same set of particles. So now let me ask you one thing. What can you say about the two densities, rho hat of x and rho bar of y comma t? Can we somehow relate these two? Is there a way to relate them? So Viswas is asking whether the regions also shouldn't correspond to part of the body D while integrating. Yes, it should be. So that is what I'm saying now. This RT is the region occupied by the part of the body D in the current configuration. And RF is the region occupied by the part of the body D, the same part of the body D in the reference configuration. Okay, now the question is how to relate this these two densities. So Mir is saying through data. So of course your answer is correct. 
but we want to explore this here. The, you may have seen it earlier. Have you seen it earlier, Mir? So let us see, and perhaps, you know, from our earlier picture that we have been doing, whenever you had Lagrangian and Aurelian functions, they were equal, isn't it? You remember that for the velocity p hat of x comma t, it was same as v bar, and then you have y hat of x comma t comma t. So if you put your y like this, then the two velocities were same. The two functions were giving you the same value, whether it is velocity, acceleration, or temperature, or anything. This is what we have seen till now. But here, the let us see the way we have defined this rho hat and rho bar. Are they coming out to be the same? It's because of the you know the quantity that they are representing. It is mass per unit volume. So one is per unit undefined volume and one is per unit reference. Sorry, per unit ref current volume. So obviously they should be different, right? So let us see how we can relate them. So this thing. If we replace y with the y hat function, okay, so if we say rho bar y hat of x comma t, okay, then comma t, and then dvy, you replace this with the determinant of f, which we denoted by j, you remember? times dvx okay so you see your your uh, variable of integration has not changed to dvx and therefore this region over which you are integrating will also change to r ref isn't it So it's a change, it's like a, what we say, change of variable formula. So therefore the domain of integration is also has to change now. Okay, but now let us equate these two things. Then can we say that integration over R ref rho hat of x minus rho bar y hat of x comma t comma t times j okay and j is again the function of x comma t into dvx that's equal to zero right we can say that because the two integrals are now same so bring them on the same side and we can then write it. Now, can we say that the integrand will then be zero? So looking at this integration, can we directly say that the integrand should be zero, the thing inside the bracket? How many of you agree that we can directly say that the thing inside the bracket should be zero? Okay, so the answer is you cannot directly say that the thing inside the bracket will be zero. What you have to say is that this integral, this integral, so since this integral holds for any R ref, Therefore, the thing inside the bracket, therefore, the integrand will vanish. See, it is because it holds for any reference region. 
or it holds for any part of the body. Let me give you some example. Think of this function y equal to x, or let us say y equal to 2x. When you draw its curve, it's like this. Right? And if I integrate this, let us say from minus 1 to 1. So integral of y dx from minus 1 to 1. What is this? So this is integral 2x dx from minus 1 to 1. So it is x square 1 minus 1, it is 0. Right? And you can also see from the diagram minus 1 to 1. So one part has got negative area and the other part has positive area. So integral is 0. So you see that just because integration is vanishing, so here integration is vanishing, that doesn't mean that this function y will be 0. Because here you can see you have an example where it is not 0. But if this were true for any domain of integration, then you can say that. If this were true for any domain of integration, then you could have said that. So basically, if you had integral y dx going from a to b equal to 0 for all a comma b, then y would be equal to 0. Okay, and there is uh, also a uh, more rigorous proof to this, but I hope you guys can see this, that yeah, that makes sense. If it holds for any domain, then yeah, then the integrand will be 0. So that's why, so now we can write that the integrand is zero from here. And so we come to the relation between the two quantities, that is rho hat of x is equal to rho bar of y hat of x comma t comma t into j, which is determinant of f, right? So I'll make it more explicit here determinant of f of x comma t. Okay, you see on the right hand side, both rho bar and that f, they are functions of time, but their product is the left hand side, which is not a function of time. Okay, so basically this rho bar will be varying in such a way that the product is not a function of time. Okay, so this gives you a way to relate the two densities. And in fact, this is also the equation of mass balance in Lagrangian form. Okay, so I'll just write it here. Equation for mass balance in Lagrangian form and it is that rho hat of x is equal to rho bar y hat of x comma t comma t into j okay and I'll box this So that's the first equation that we have derived, but it's the Lagrangian form. Some of you coming from fluid mechanics. Is this what you saw? I'm sure nobody has seen this equation till now, unless you have done some advanced course. This is a Lagrangian form. You know, this is also called mass continuity equation. But is this what you saw? Guys in fluid mechanics, is this what you saw? Is this your mass continuity equation? It's a differential equation, by the way. If you 
recall, so all of you have done fluid mechanics in your undergraduate course. If you can recall the mass continuity equation, it is a differential equation. So let us try to derive that differential equation, okay? So some of you are already giving, writing down the equation. So let us try to derive that differential equation. And of course, it is going to come from here only. Now, if you look at these two equations, um, yeah, just looking at these two equations itself. In fact, you can derive it also from this box. But I'll try to do it in a slightly different way, which is more resembling with uh, what we have done in fluid mechanics. So if you look at, um, okay, either this circle thing or the green thing. What do you see? That the left-hand side is not a function of time, where the right-hand side, it looks like there are quantities which are dependent on time. But now you have seen that it's not a function of time, right? Because it's a mass of the same region, same part of the body. So if you take its d by dt, it should not be a function of time, isn't it? So if I take that integral here, R of P, and you have this rho y comma t dvy okay this is the integral and you are looking at a region of the body okay and as the time changes the region is changing because you are looking at the same set of particles so as the body moves in the space the region occupied by it also moves right so therefore this domain of integration is a function of time. Now, if you do its d by dt, what will you get? If you do its time derivative, what should it give you? It should be zero, right? As, as we saw that this is, this will give you the same mass because from physics it is the mass of the same part of the body, right? So it has to give you zero. Now, a very important question is how to bring this d by dt inside because the domain of integration is also a function of time. And that is something, you know, in our undergraduate course, most of us just try to remember, okay, just remember the formula, but we don't really know how that was done. It's also because the derivations were not so clear. Of course, you can use Leibniz rule as one of you are saying, but we can also do the change of variable. Okay, we can also do change of variable. So let's see what is that giving us. So can we change the variable so that the domain becomes fixed? It is independent of time. So you know that, you, now you have already seen it, no? Because you see, this is what you did here. When you came from here to here, this is what you did. That the domain becomes independent of time. So let us do that here. <clears throat> so it is same as d by dt, r ref, <clears throat> and this is by the row bar, right? rho bar and then you have inside y hat x comma t comma t j d v x right and this is equal to zero now very interestingly the domain of integration is not a function of time so it is quite easy now to move it inside 
okay and then take the time derivative so when you do that we get integration over r ref and then you have d by dt of this row bar into j dvx and remember that this d by dt is the total time derivative okay it's a total time derivative So now if we use product rule, right? So this becomes integration over R ref row bar dot into J plus row bar times J dot, isn't it? And then this row bar dot see it's the total time derivative of row bar can you split into two parts remember the time derivative it's a function of y and t both no and here y is also changing with time and then you have explicit dependence with time also so can we write it as del rho bar by del t plus divergence of rho bar and you see small divergence it's the eulerian divergence dotted with velocity remember this is something we have also done this is how you relate the Lagrangian time derivative with Eulerian time derivative so here you have Lagrangian time derivative and you are relating it with the Eulerian time derivative so this formula you have already seen and this whole thing is uh, obviously multiplied with j and then you have another one plus rho bar into j dot and what do you do for j dot so j dot sorry yeah it is grad i'm sorry it's not divergence it is grad so j dot we have already seen till now it is j times um divergence of velocity isn't it j times divergence of velocity right and then you see this is now quite it's a neat thing because uh, it's mathematics and uh, everything is just following logically see you have this j or in both the terms why don't we bring it outside and make j dvx as dvy so now you can further again change to Eulerian volume and you can say it is rt and then in here you have del rho bar by del t plus grad of rho bar dot with velocity plus rho bar into divergence of velocity d v y that's equal to zero isn't it and actually you can make this more nicer these two terms you can combine them together and write divergence of rho bar into velocity you know when you do this divergence of scalar rho times vector v you'll get what is up there you should try to do that exercise okay 
So this is same as integration over the current volume del rho bar over del t plus divergence of rho bar into v dvy equal to zero. Now, what do you think? What can we do now? Anyone? What is the next step? Again, because this region is arbitrary, you know, you could have any region. So, so when we started this formula, no, we did not fix this region RT. You could have chosen any region. So because RT is arbitrary, so this is you know completely Eulerian derivation because RT is arbitrary. This implies the integrand must vanish, which tells us that del rho bar by del t plus divergence of rho bar v bar, that's equal to zero. Or you can also write in the expanded form, which is del rho bar by del t plus gradient of rho bar dot v bar plus rho bar into divergence of velocity that's equal to zero. So this is the expanded form. Okay, Toyva is asking how dj by dt is j times divergence of velocity. So this is of course not an easy thing. In the you know in one of the classes we simply used it. But if you want to derive it, it is not easy. For this, you have to use the formula for the determinant in the initial notation and then work out the time derivative. Okay, I'll, I'll see if I can send you a proof, some link for this proof. Okay. So if Toyba, if you send me an email now, I will send this, send the link for the proof. Okay, so following. So this is the mass continuity equation that you guys have seen, isn't it? If you guys are coming from fluid mechanics, this is the mass continuity equation. And that's the Eulerian form. And of course, there are you know, sub cases of it. For example, when the flow is st steady, when flow is steady, what happens? Can someone tell me? When flow is steady, then none of the properties change with time at a given location. When flow is steady, that means del by del t is zero, not d by dt, just del by del t is zero. So in that case, this continuity equation simply reduces to divergence of rho bar v bar equal to zero, or this expanded form that's gradient of rho bar dot with v bar plus rho times divergence of v that's equal to zero. So up here, I think I have missed this uh, V tilde below because it's a vector and here bar I have missed. Okay. So that's the, you know, for steady flow. And further, you know, further, if it is incompressible, if flow is incompressible, then what happens? In that case, a small divergence of velocity is zero, not big divergence. A small divergence of velocity is automatically zero. And then you can use 
the remaining thing is simply that grad of rho bar dot with velocity is zero. So this is when flow is incompressible as well as steady. Then this is the you know mass continuity equation reduces to this. How can someone derive that Darwin's velocity equal to zero is the condition for incompressible flow? Why did I say that small divergence velocity equal to zero is the is the condition for incompressible flow? So that is coming from you know in uh, we we found that for a for a incompressible deformation, that f should be equal to one, right? Do you remember? Because dvx or dvy is equal to j times dvx, right? And if the deformation is incompressible, then j is equal to one, right? For incompressible. So if you take its time derivative, then d by dt of j that's equal to zero, right? Which is, as I wrote above, it is j times divergence of velocity equal to zero. And from here, you get this incompressible flow equation that this is the, a velocity field must satisfy this if the flow is incompressible. Okay, so I think I'll stop here. And uh, let's meet again next week. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. So I'm going to unmute all of you. Uh, sir, uh, we right now said that rho cap as a function of x is the uh, density in the reference configuration, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, but sir, back in lecture three, uh, when we had sort of defined all of those uh, material description, Eulerian form, Lagrangian form, in that uh, we said that yeah. say theta is some property. So there, uh, theta yeah. cap as a function of x, we specifically said that that is not uh, the property of the particle in the reference configuration, but it is uh, in the current configuration. So what's like okay. the difference? That's a very, good, correct, correct. So very good uh, point that you're bringing up. So what, what is your name? Uh, Siddhan, sir. Siddhan. So Siddhan says, you know, for example, when you have Lagrangian description for velocity. Yeah. Then it does not mean that it is the velocity of the particle in the reference configuration. So it does not mean that is the velocity in the reference configuration. And that was motivated from physics. It is the same velocity, but we just want to describe in terms of x. So it's the Lagrangian description of velocity. But here, the way, you know, for rho hat of x, so this is indeed the density in the reference country. So there is a difference here. So this is indeed the density, I should say mass density in the reference configuration. This is not the mass density in the current configuration. So this is a difference and we should all must remember this difference. As far as this rho hat function is concerned, it is indeed the density in the reference configuration. Okay. Uh, so, sir, is this like some exception only with the property density? Yeah, as of now, this is an exception with this density. Uh, we might see some more. I'm not sure. I don't remember, but I think as of now, this is the only function which is 
and that's why I said no, th this rho hat is not equal to rho bar because they are two different quantities. Whereas v hat was equal to v bar or a hat was equal to a bar because they were the same quantity but expressed differently. But here, rho hat and rho bar are two different quantities, they are not the same quantity. Okay. Yeah, thank you, sir. 